Nate Dogg was born in Mississippi and moved to Long Beach, California when he was 14, after his parents divorced. There, he went to the same high school as Snoop Dogg and Warren G. They would have freestyle battles at lunch times, with Snoop rapping and Nate singing. They eventually formed the group 213. Nate Dogg is best known for his deep vocals and has featured in many classic hip-hop and R&B songs. Long before fame, he sang in his father's church, Lifeline Baptist Church, where his mother led the choir. When he moved to California, he sang at the New Hope Baptist Church in Long Beach. At age 17, he left high school to join the Marine Corps. Nate was stationed in Okinawa, Japan, where he was an ammunition specialist. The Marine Corps' basic training was gruelling and arguably the most challenging of the combat zones. Nate said he joined the Marines because he wanted to see if he was a man. After nearly four years of service, he was dishonourably discharged. In a TV One documentary, Nate's sister said he came home unauthorised a couple of times and his grandfather had to drive him back to the base. Ultimately, his friends and family believe he left because he didn't want to be told what to do. According to Warren G, Nate admitted he learned a lot from the experience. They taught him to fear nothing. DJ Quick, who worked on many of Nate's tracks, explained how the Marines lightly shaped Nate's composed conduct, saying, It's funny, I never even knew he was a Marine, but that might explain his stoicism. Just a calm under pressure kind of dude, but generally a nice guy. I've never seen Nate excited. He wasn't excitable. Snoop said, unlike him, Nate was never in a gang, nor did he participate in gang violence. All he wanted to do was focus on music. However, in the early to mid 90s, Nate Dogg had a few run-ins with the law. He was charged with robbing a check changers in 1991, to which he pleaded not guilty. He posted bail at $145,000 and was released. Three years later, he was charged with robbing a Taco Bell, but there was a mistrial, and he was also acquitted of the 1991 robbery. Nate Dogg was later convicted in a drug case in 1996, and lost his right to legally own a gun. Meanwhile, 213, named after the Long Beach area code at the time, recorded their demo behind the world famous VIP record store. It was later heard by Dr. Dre, he was the stepbrother of Warren G. Warren G slipped the cassette tape in the stereo at a bachelor's party held by Dre. Only Snoop was offered a deal, which was a huge conflict for him, but he featured Nate and Warren on some of his tracks. Nate really stood out for his distinctive voice and sang on Dre's The Chronic, which established his signature sound. Then, in 1994, Nate Dogg had his first hit single with Warren G called Regulate. It was the first single from the soundtrack to the movie Above the Rim and was on Warren G's album Regulate G-Funk Era. The song samples Michael McDonald's song I Keep Forgetting Every Time You're Near, Sign of the Times by jazz musician Bob James and Dr Dre's Let Me Ride. A rapper and vocalist singing on a track in equal parts had never really been done before they complimented each other greatly, and it ended up being well received. The song reached number two on the Billboard Hot 100 and eight in the R&B stroke hip hop charts. It was the breakthrough single for both artists, listed on VH1's greatest songs of all time. Nate Dogg's fame really took off around this time, but in subsequent years, he started to get in trouble with the law again. He was caught in the possession of a firearm in 2000 and arrested for allegedly assaulting his ex-girlfriend, holding her against her will and setting her mum's car on fire. He had previously proposed to her and given her a four carat diamond ring. He went to her house to get the ring back. She was there with her new boyfriend and an altercation ensued. His initial felony charge of illegally owning a firearm was reduced to possession of an unmarked gun. He was able to avoid three years in prison by pleading guilty his ex actually ended up dropping the charges too. His attorney, Mark Garagos, said, when the case started, there were a host of charges against him. We are delighted it was resolved with a misdemeanor. Nate Dogg was working on releasing solo material. He signed a publishing deal 
with Death Row Records and was supposed to release his solo album through the label. He also signed up to sing hooks on tracks of many different artists at Death Row. He would wear a bulletproof vest and carry a pistol any time he went to the Death Row studios. He never felt at ease there and felt the need to protect himself. Snoop confirmed that none of the artists felt comfortable in the studio, saying, We come from the streets. It's better to be caught with than without. Suge did not release Nate's solo album for some reason, and it wasn't until six years later on a different label that he finally was able to release his album. This was in 1998. It didn't do as well as he would have liked, especially compared to the multi-platinum selling success of Snoop Dogg and Warren G. But it soon became apparent that his strength actually lied with singing with others. He grew up singing in church and with his siblings, so it came natural to him. Two years later, he sung on a track with Moss Def called Oh No. This reached number one on the Hot Rap Singles chart. He also did a song with Fabulous, which was a great crossover hit for him. It is believed he commanded at least 150,000 a hook. Exhibit said, when Nate got on your song, it did more than validate it, it made it a hit. In 2001, in the midst of his legal troubles, he released Music and Me with Electra Records. The most successful song from the album was I Got Love, which featured on the soundtrack for the film, The Transporter. The album featured Dre, Exhibit, Jermaine Dupri, Ludacris and many other hip-hop artists. It sold 400,000 copies. His self-titled album was released in 2003. Sadly, it was his final solo album. The following year, 213 reunited and released The Hard Way. It reached the top of the R&B and hip-hop charts and sold 95,000 in its first week. The first single from the album, So Fly, reached number two in the US Billboard Hot 100. Many saw Nate Dogg as the mellow guy in the background with the killer hooks and smooth voice. He had a certain disposition and it came across in interviews. On December 19th, 2007, Nate Dogg suffered his first of a series of strokes. His son, Najil, would later say that the strokes were linked to a car crash he was involved in with his then girlfriend. He had metal rods fitted into his skull as a result of this crash. Unfortunately, Nate was a heavy drinker and friends said he continued drinking during this time. He discharged himself from hospital to perform at a show in Vegas. This was believed to be the beginning of the end in relation to his health. The stroke left him paralyzed on his left side. Reports confirmed he did not suffer brain damage and his voice had not been affected. His PR rep, Rod McGrew, said, Time will tell everything, obviously. The doctor can only guess what the outcome will be. But based on situations with similar people his age, and based on his health, the prognosis is good right now. He was released from the hospital and sent to her rehab facility for recovery. Snoop Dogg recalls visiting him at the time, only to discover that he had a bottle of Hennessy under the bed. Not only was he a heavy drinker, he also had hypertension, a condition that is linked to strokes. A few years before his death, Nate Dogg returned to his gospel roots by forming a gospel choir called Innate Praise, which he co-founded with his friend Erica Beckwith. He wanted to return to his gospel roots to make his mother proud and produce music that his parents would feel comfortable listening to. Tragically, 10 months later, he suffered a second stroke, which led him to be put under sedation and given a breathing tube. After this stroke, he was completely paralyzed from the neck down. His mother described how she had to use a letter board to communicate with him. He would look up to spell out words Snoop and Warren G supported him throughout the whole ordeal as well as his other close friends, siblings 
and family members. Fans expressed surprise that he had suffered a stroke as he was only 41. One quarter of strokes in the US occur with those who are under the age of 65. One in 20 deaths in the US are caused by strokes. Nate Dogg died on March 15, 2011 in Long Beach, California at age 41. On March 17, his attorney, Mark Garagos, confirmed that the cause of death was from complications of multiple strokes. He was buried at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Long Beach. Warren G said his death came as a surprise because they really believed he would make a recovery. Well, I am still messed up, you know, from losing my buddy. And it was definitely, it was definitely a, a surprise because he was progressing a lot. He, you know, was starting to be able to tell you, like, yes and no. You know, and, uh, you know, I used to talk to him and, you know, he would, some things, you know, when I first walked in, he would cry and I'd tell him, man, don't, don't cry. Keep your head up, man. You know, we're going to get you through this. And, uh, man, I, uh, just used to talk about, you know, basketball and, you know, the things that he liked and he would laugh. And, but it, it, it really uh, surprised me that that happened, you know. Was he paralyzed at all from that second stroke? Yeah, yeah, paralyzed him pretty bad. Oh, uh, what part of his body was paralyzed? Like, he paralyzed him from his neck down. Really? Yeah. And, you know, he was getting better after the first one. And the second one, like, boom, hit him, you know. And, uh, uh, Many artists within the hip-hop scene paid their respects to Nate Dogg. He had worked with so many throughout the years and is a staple contribution to many of hip-hop's and R&B's most iconic songs. As well as a collaborator, he made his own contributions as a member of 213 and as a solo artist, and he will always be remembered for Regulate. A few months after his death, Warren G said he thinks about the rapper every single day. I think about him every day. It really gets thick. When I'm in the studio working, I'll be doing a track and I know that he would kill it. He was much loved and his colleagues and friends and family continue to speak well of him. It was a huge loss to the music world. Hey, Tom. Yeah. Why are you keeping your hands in your pockets? So I won't steal nothing. Did <laughs> <laughs> you pay money for that jacket? Yes. Mm -hmm. Silly. Right. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing about that dress. <laughs> What song do you most remember Nate Dogg for? Thanks for watching. Share your thoughts below. Subscribe and press the bell for more.